Hey guys, if you've ever purchased a battery pack because you saw on one battery that the labeled C rating was larger or bigger than another battery pack C rating, well, you're in for a treat here today because by the end of this video, you will no longer look at C ratings the same. In fact, you will change the way that you buy batteries based off of the C rating alone. Let's get started and jump into exactly what I mean. Here is the first chart that I wanna break down with you because one of the things that we do on this channel is we use the average internal resistance of a battery pack to ultimately predict the performance that we are going to get out of that battery pack. We also do a load test and I'm using some of that data here in this chart to show you how both of these things are strongly related. Now the reason why we chose to use this average internal resistance is because it is extremely easy for anyone at home to do this on your own charger if your charger has that feature. One of the things that you have to do is just make certain that the environment and the process that you're using is very well controlled and then you're gonna have repeatable results. Let's take a look at what this chart represents. When we take a look at the average internal resistance, this is on our X axis and on our Y axis on this top chart represents the average cell wattage. This is how much power we're getting out of the cells and every single point here represents a different battery that we've tested. Thanks to the Patreon supporters, we've been able to purchase over 28 batteries on this channel and we have tested every single one over the last two years. When we take a look at our average cell wattage and compare that to average internal resistance, you could see the trend line here follows a good pattern and shows us that there's a strong trend. We take a look at this R squared value up here and it represents a number of 0 0.808. Now I placed a chart here on the bottom right to represent what does this mean? And if we look at that R squared value, it falls into this category right here which the interpretation is it's a very strong relationship. It means that the relationship dominates. Realistically, what this means is there is a very, very strong relationship between the average cell wattage and the average internal resistance. Now, if we jump into the other chart that we have here, this is the voltage at the 10 second mark. So all we do is we run a high low. This is somewhere around 105 amps and we measure what that voltage is at the 10 second mark. And in this chart, we're also comparing it to the average internal resistance. In the average internal resistance, you could see that same trend here. As the average internal resistance increases, we are getting poorer performance. Same with the top chart. When we take a look at the R squared value of 0.83, this also comes in the very strong where the relationship dominates, telling us that there's absolutely a trend between the average internal resistance and the voltage at 10 seconds. Ultimately, what these two charts tell us is that the average internal resistance absolutely reflects what the true and real world performance performance is, and we can use it to represent our data sets. Let's now take a look at the next chart we have. Here we have the internal resistance rated C rating versus the average internal resistance. A formula is used in order to determine the average internal resistance and convert that into a C rating. The R squared value is essentially one here. That makes sense because this is a formula that takes average IR and converts it into an IR rated C rating. And you can see the trend as we decrease in resistance, we move right to left, we get better internal resistance rated C ratings. Important to know, let's take a look at the next chart that we have here. So here we have the internal resistance rated C rating and the C rating. What the C rating represents in every slide here today is the labeled C rating that you would find on a battery packs label. And in this case, you could see multiple different battery packs that we've tested here on the channel. And in red, this is the internal resistance rated C rating. This is the one that we we've measured and represents the true and actual internal resistance. So when you look at all of these batteries, you can see that the red line is quite different than the blue line. The blue line is the C rating you find on the actual pack where the red is that real internal resistance C rating. And there's a couple cases here where you might think a battery pack, if it comes from the same brand, one represents maybe 60C, the next one is 80C, that must mean that that 80C battery pack is gonna put out more power. 
That's not the case. If you look here in the middle, we have a 4S Turnigy rapid battery pack. This is a 5,000 milliamp hour. And we have also 4S Turnigy graphene battery packs. And you could see the red bar here is much taller than the bar here for the rapid pack. This rapid is a 100C and the other battery is a 45C. Double the C rating, but you get half the performance from it. And both of these are Turnigy battery packs. Really interesting indeed. And as you move Closer to the end of this spectrum here, you can see that there's a couple battery packs at the very end that spike in terms of the labeled C rating. And you could see that the labeled C rating doubles, but yet the performance that you get or the internal resistance rated C rating that you get out of here is not exactly double than that of any battery pack on the left-hand side of those two. Let's take a look at the next chart that we have here. This chart represents the internal resistance rating C rating versus the labeled C rating. Here you can see that if you just plot the C rating on the X axis here and the internal resistance rated C rating on the Y axis, what you get here is essentially picking up a bunch of marbles and throwing it on the page here and they just scatter themselves all over. So we got an R squared value here represented as 0.145. And if you remember from our previous chart here, that 0.145 means that a trend exists but barely we have a very, very weak trend in terms of what we see here in that particular chart. And that's exactly what we have noticed. When it comes to the actual C rating versus an actual internal resistance based rating, we are seeing that there is no true comparison. We know that the internal resistance rated C rating is awfully close and much more close than any labeled C rating will ever be. And here is the chart to prove and say exactly that. C ratings are essential essentially bogus because what we're seeing is it does not relate to the actual rating that these packs have. Now, if we jump into the next chart that we have here in this slide, we have the real C rating divided by the labeled C rating that is now placed on the Y axis. If you had a 100 C labeled battery, but you actually measure that it's only 10 C actual C rating, you would have 10% and that would be listed here on the left hand side. And then we compare that value to it's labeled C rating and this is what you end up seeing. So you can see that there's many packs that actually are available that have less than 20% capability compared with the C rating that actually comes on the label of that battery. That is kind of crazy when you really look at it. There's only a few battery packs here at the top end of this chart that are between 60 to 80% actual C rating versus the real C rating. The majority of everything else here falls below 50%. Here you can see that at 100C all the way up to 250C, you have these battery packs that are delivering less than 20% of the labeled C rating. And this last chart I have here for you is the C rating group versus the internal resistance rated C rating. The C rating groups I place on the bottom, you can see groupings of 25 to 40, 45 to 60, and so forth. The first point that I wanna mention here based off of this being 25 to 40 C is that the lowest battery pack that we've measured here on the channels are roughly 12.6 C. That means that 25 on the low end of this range here is only about 50% off from that 12.6 C rating. In other words, you're going to get a battery pack that more realistically represents the true C rating that it actually delivers. What also can be seen here is that the variation between the topmost battery and the bottommost battery is actually the tightest here that we have. And it could be based purely off of only three data points taken, but let's take a look at what we see in the next groupings. When we look at the 45 to 60 C grouping, we do see that the range of this actually actually is larger. We also see, even though that the overall C rating increased, we do notice that the actual average between this grouping versus this grouping is roughly the same at about 22 C. Even though we shifted to a higher C rating pack, these are coming out to equal performance as our first group. Our third group looking at 70 to 100 C shows that we almost have like a bimodal distribution here. We have a grouping on the top representing our first mode and we have a grouping on 
on the bottom representing that second mode. And even if you take the average here, which is probably somewhere around this mark, we again see about maybe 24C or 25C. So it did go up a little bit, but the variation here is greater. And the actual true C rating is only marginally better here at a few C at best. And if we take a look at final group here, we could see that we have again a bimodal distribution where there's a few high performing battery packs here on the top, but then we also have a bunch of low performing battery packs here on the bottom. And if we take a look at this bottom most, it actually comes in at the worst. So the variation here is the greatest that we see. It is a true relationship being the smallest variance on group one, largest variation on group four, but we also see that the 120 C rated pack delivers the lowest C rating of all of these battery packs. That is truly impressive as it relates to the C rating. What we can determine from this is obviously there is no relationship here on the labeled C rating versus what we actually get out of the battery pack. Now that we've seen all of these charts, I'm gonna jump into the conclusion and the recommendations for buying a lithium polymer battery pack because obviously you cannot trust the C rating found on the labels. Our first point here for the conclusion of this video is that the labeled C ratings are 99% marketing tool and not a reliable measure of real LiPo performance. This is absolutely true and we see it on every single chart that I've shown here today. Number two, real world testing shows a hard performance ceiling. In other words, we saw a maximum of 36C and regardless of what the labels as high as 45 to 250C show, you're always gonna hit that hard ceiling of 36C as far as all the battery packs that we've tested here on the channel. I'm still searching for more high performance battery packs, I will get a hold of them and we will test them. But everything here shows is that it's going to be somewhere around that maximum 36 C and down to a potential possible 12 C for those low performing battery packs. Number three, internal resistance and voltage sag, not the C label, determine how a battery actually performs in your RC application. Just like the very first slide that I showed, this is absolutely true. And you'll want to base all of your information on that point. Number four, do not change choose LiPo battery packs based on C ratings alone. If performance matters, buy based on real world data, such as what we do here on the channel, RC Explained, or other areas where you'll find this type of battery information. I know there's not too many people that are doing this, but I'm gonna continue doing it for as long as I possibly can. And thanks to the Patreon supporters who help motivate this video series. Measured internal resistance is also what you should be buying based off of and user results independent reviews that ultimately utilize the performance metrics of battery packs. Well guys, I hope this influences your purchasing decisions. If you were once looking at C ratings across the market space there, I know for myself, this absolutely changes the way that I buy battery packs. It also changes the way that I recommend power system because now I see the data and I know what battery packs are delivering. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.